But instead, that bug, that obsession, continued to hold him. Um, he wrote in his diary this quote, this is something all can understand, a victory of nature, a deed that lifts us above the great monotony of daily life, the triumph of the living over the stiffened realm of death. And so he decided to make another expedition, this time following Amundsen's route. He became the only uh, person ever to follow two of the classic routes to the South Pole. And then finally, he decided at the age of 55 to attempt his final expedition. It would be his most daring, his most dangerous, in which he would try to walk from one side of Antarctica to the other. Henry, on one of his expeditions, had scrawled this in the ice. So, um, this time the challenges would be even greater because when he was with a group, he had people who could look him in the eye and observe him. This time he wouldn't have that. Henry also always was so concerned about others, but it's harder to often be concerned about yourself. And he knew those would be the great challenges he had. Also, if he were to fall into a crevasse alone, there would be nobody to pull him out. Um, and here, before he set out, uh, you can see him uh, with his family. Uh, this marks his route, which was going to be uh, in the opposite direction in which he headed the other time. This time he was uh, starting on the other side of Antarctica, and he would walk all the way across. Um, he was determined to finish before February when winter set in, um, uh, and he knew at that point there could be no rescue uh, plane. Uh, he always carried with him a satellite phone. And after arriving in Antarctica that November, Worsley wrote in his diary, so happy to be back, adding, many days of struggle ahead, but a glorious start. He described Antarctica as the best place on Earth right now. But then, as on Shackleton's expedition, everything began to go wrong. The conditions and the storms were worse than he'd ever experienced. He made it to the South Pole, and he kept on continuing, sometimes trekking for 16 hours in a day. But virtually every part of him was in agony. His arms and legs throbbed, his back ached, his feet were blistered, his toes were discolored, his fingers had started to become numb with frostbite. In his diary, he wrote, I'm worried about my fingers. One of the little fingers already gone, and the other's very sore. One of his front teeth had broken off when he, when he tried to bite a, a frozen a bar. He had lost some 40 pounds. They, they were burning about 6,000 to 8,000 calories a day. And he was on the verge of collapse. Yet he had never failed before, and he was never one to give up. One of the lessons he had always took from Shackleton was that there was always one more move, and that through force of mind, through force of will, through force of endurance, you can conquer. And so he kept forging on, knowing he was getting closer and closer to his grasp of, of realizing uh, and making history. But he would record these messages uh, at night when he was camped out on a satellite phone and they would get then uh, broadcast so people could hear them. And his voice was fading. He would talk about feeling alone. At one point he called his son Max and he said, I just want to hear your voice. I just want to hear your voice. And Max said to him, Dad, you're a polar warrior. You just need to pull out and come home. And when Joanna would hear her husband's voice on these broadcasts and when she would speak to him by the satellite phone, she became increasingly concerned. And she asked some others what she should do, and they said, Henry is an expert. 
he'll know what to do. And he can always push what Henry had, this button on the satellite phone, which he could push for a rescue plane. He called it the most expensive taxi ride in the world if he hit it. At a certain point, though, he felt uh, he was incontinent. He kept trying to forge ahead. And eventually, he is confronting his physical limits. And he stays for a day in his tent. And whenever he was in trouble, and I think it's something that applies to all of us in our lives in some ways, but his was very specific the way he would frame it. But he would ask himself, what would shacks do? And again, part of the lessons he had thought was that through will and through force of mind, you can prevail. But as he thought about it, was that really right? One of the real lessons of Shackleton was that it